Hi, I'm Kyle from The Distilled Man, and up next I'm going to show you how to make two cocktail garnishes that look really fancy, but are actually really easy to make. When you're at home, even if you make a fancy cocktail, you don't usually go all out with presentation because, well, you're at home. If I were lazy, I might be making an old fashioned, for instance, and instead of using a rocks glass, I might opt to put my drink in my trusty far side cows from around the world mug that I've had since I was 10. It's actually a pretty cool mug. And if I'm skimping on the glassware for my drink, I'm sure as hell not gonna go to the trouble of making some sort of fancy garnish, right? That'd just be too much work. But here's the thing, when it comes to cocktails, what I actually really appreciate is not only the ritual of making the drink and crafting it with all the ingredients, but that presentation aspect of finding the right glass and actually making a little, a little bit of a garnish. And that's what makes it fun, right? So I think you can figure out the glassware on your own, but today I wanna show you two simple garnishes that you can use to dress up your drinks at home. The first one is a lemon twist. This one's a great garnish because it goes with a ton of different drinks and it looks really elegant. Okay, so to make the lemon twist, you just need three, uh, four things actually. Obviously you wanna have a cutting board or a surface to cut on. You need a knife. Um, you need a lemon, obviously. And you can either use um, like the tip of a bar spoon or something pointy. I like to use um, an ice pick. So, and essentially what we're gonna be doing is separating the peel of the lemon uh, as much as we can keep it together from the meat of the lemon. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna cut off the ends of the lemon. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our ice pick or our bar spoon and we're gonna to try to sort of separate the peel from the meat. And the first thing you do is kind of put the point in into the pith. Um, you don't wanna have it in the meat of the lemon and you don't wanna have it kind of too close to the peel. Um, you wanna put it in there. This is actually a lot of pith for this one. So I'm gonna put it in like right about here, about an eighth of an inch at first. And I'm just gonna start going around. And then as I go, I'm gonna start pushing in deeper and deeper this way, okay? So, starting to separate the peel. You can see it's starting to come off there. And I'm pushing deeper and deeper as I go. And I'm gonna keep going until I reach about the halfway point. All right, so we're close. Here we go, I'm about halfway through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it around and repeat the same thing on the other side. So we'll put that in there just a little bit at first. Oops, getting too much pith. Now, going around, I'm going a little bit deeper as I go. And at some point, my cut from the other side is gonna meet up with this side. Uh, and I think we are there. So you can see it's poking out the other end. It looks like I am pretty much through the whole thing. Sometimes you'll get a little bit more meat on uh, the peel than you want, but that just comes with practice. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use my thumbs and just push the meat of that out. Now, if you wanna eat this, you can. Lots of uh, lemon, uh, lots of vitamin C here, or you could squeeze it and use it for juice. But I'm gonna put that aside for the moment. And what I'm, what I'm left here, with is this peel um, that I wanna keep mostly intact. I'm just gonna essentially cut one side like that. And so we've got this nice long strip here and that's what we're gonna be using to make our twists. So what I'll do is I'll lay this flat. Um, actually, sometimes it helps to do this way. And I'm gonna take my knife. When I do it, I like to sort of choke up on my knife like this a little bit. Just be careful not to hurt yourself on the blade, but I find it gives me a little more control. And I'm gonna kinda of go like this. And these things are about maybe a quarter of an inch uh, wide. So I'm just gonna go like this. And what we're left with, actually, you know what, this edge is a little dirty. Let me cut, cut the next one. Let's do this. See, what you can do is you're gonna get a number of twists from just this one peel. So you can kinda of bulk make them ahead of time. So we have this nice, perfect little strip here. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to 
actually wrap it around either your bar spoon or your uh, ice pick, whatever you're using, to help make it into a curly cue. So I'm just going to start wrapping it around. Whoops. It helps if you kind of pinch it as you go. And I'm going to, once it's all completely curled up there, I'm going to just kind of give it one more last pinch. Like that. And then when I take it off, it'll sort of stay together and be nice, this nice little uh, curly cue. Pretty cool, huh? The second garnish is a really fun one. It's the flaming orange peel. Now this garnish really captures the showmanship aspect. And it looks really impressive, but as you'll see in a second, it's very easy to do. And this was kind of a trademark of Dale DeGroff, who many people consider to be sort of a godfather of mixology. He was actually credited with bringing back the term mixology in the 1980s, after it was uh, actually, I think it originated in the 1800s. And Dale used to use the flaming orange peel with a lot of his drinks. So to make the flaming orange, you're gonna need three things. Um, well, actually four, I guess. If I, I prefer to have a cutting board to work on as a surface, um, but what you really need, obviously, is an orange, you need a knife, and you need either matches or a lighter. I couldn't find matches, so I'm just gonna show you how to do it with the lighter. Um, so the first thing you do is just cut off about, uh, I don't know, inch and a half, two inch round piece of the, of the peel. Let's see. Peel there. And I'm gonna set that aside for a second. And what you're gonna do with your dominant hand is you're gonna actually point the uh, outside of the peel, the orange part, towards your drink, um, and you're gonna sort of quickly do a snapping motion. You can't do it slowly, otherwise it won't work. Because what that's gonna do is actually shoot orange oil out over the top of the drink. And you're gonna put, with your other hand, you're gonna either light the match or have the lighter ready with that flame to catch the orange oil, and it's gonna make this nice little poof. Um, if you're doing it with a match, one thing to note is that you do have to light the match and then set it aside for half a second, not half a second, maybe a second and a half, two seconds, to let the sulfur burn off a little bit so you don't get that sulfur flavor. But let's see if this works. All right, so I'm gonna get my flame ready. And then I'm just gonna quickly, boom. All right, so what I did is, mm, I created this nice like scent of uh, caramelized orange oil around, and I'm just gonna rub this around uh, the edge of the drink and put that in. And then you have your fancy flamed orange peel. And that's the thing, with both of these citrus garnishes, they're not just for looks, they also contribute to the smell and the flavor of the drink. Because you get this wonderful citrus aroma right before the drink touches your lips. Hmm. All right, well, if you decide to give either of these garnishes a try, let me know how it goes in the comments. I always like hearing from you guys. And be careful with the flaming orange pill. Don't light yourself on fire. And uh, don't forget, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you soon.